This fly will not leave me alone. Stephanie and today I'm going to help you decide if a service dog is right for you. <laughs> I'm going to share with you all the five things that I considered before I decided to get Dexter my service dog. Now keep in mind you don't have to have all of these signs to benefit from a service dog. You can have one, two, three, or all of these things and I'm not here to tell you if you should or should not get a service dog this is just to help you make an informed decision because it is a big decision if you are considering getting a service dog I do recommend talking with your doctor or your medical professional to see if it truly is right for you keep in mind you do not need doctor's consent or a letter or anything like that to qualify to have a service dog but some programs do require it so keep that in mind when you're doing your research I know I keep going back and saying service dog but just so you guys know I am referring to service animals in general which to my knowledge could be a service dog or a miniature horse but really how many of us are considering miniature horses <laughs> so the first sign that you may need a service dog is that you've exhausted most of your other options so maybe you've tried many different medications that don't work very well seen different doctors and gotten various opinions or you've tried different therapies and they've been minimally helpful or not helpful enough to make your disability not as impairing. So for example, Dexter is going to be my psychiatric service dog, so I deal mostly with depression and anxiety along with other mental health issues. But I've tried so many different medications over the last several years. I've been to different psychiatrists. I've gone and tried therapy, which I just found to be incredibly triggering for me. So my hope is that Dexter can help me do things that I otherwise wouldn't be able to do since trying medications and doctors and therapies haven't really helped me do that. And that leads us into the second sign that you may benefit from a service dog, which is you need help being more independent. So if you find that you're relying heavily on somebody else to do certain things or you're just holding yourself back in life because you can't do things as a result of your disability, that's a good sign that you might need a service dog. For me, the biggest thing that holds me back with my mental health is my social anxiety. So I don't leave the house very often. If I do, it either has to be with my husband or meeting up with someone that I know really well. Otherwise, I'm at home most of the time. When I do go out in public, even if it is with my husband, I always run the risk of having an anxiety attack. So I'm really hoping that that's something Dexter can help me with in the future and it also means that I can't work so it doesn't really give me the opportunity to live my life fully I can't go to school there are just so many ways that I am hoping Dexter can help me gain more independence in my life that I currently can't do on my own and the nice thing about gaining this independence is taking some of that burden off your current caretakers so if you're relying on somebody else to help you do these things that can help take some of the pressure off of them too now this leads us into the third sign that you may need to serve service dog, which is it can help you get the treatment you need to heal. So for me, I'm hoping Dexter can really help me get back into therapy because in the past it's been really triggering and I haven't been able to stick through with it, but I know it's an important part of my healing process. I'm also hoping that Dexter can help me with going to doctor's appointments because I can find talking with psychiatrists to be triggering too when I'm talking about my symptoms and my history. So I'm relying on him to help with that so that I don't have to rely on my husband to always come with me. Another example of how a service dog can help you get the treatment that you need is grabbing any medications that maybe you forget to take or that your disability makes it difficult to take on your own as well as going to physical therapy or other similar things that are related to your disability. So like I've tried ketamine therapy in the past and I think it would have been so much less stressful and so much more helpful if I would have had a service dog there with me. The fourth sign that a service dog is right for you is that a service dog would fit well into your family. So that includes your family being supportive of it, not having any allergy issues, as well as just the home environment that you live in and if it's suitable for a dog. This doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have had a ton of experience with dogs or anything like that. It's just more of you're not afraid of dogs and that you don't dislike dogs. Otherwise that can easily cause an issue with bonding and the service dog wouldn't be a good fit for you. And if you're not a fan of dogs, maybe consider a miniature horse as your service animal. <laughs> 
miniature horse handlers, please don't troll me in the comments. <laughs> and the last sign that I'm going to share with you guys to determine if a service dog is right for you is that you're ready to make the big commitment that comes with having a service animal. Whether you are training your own service dog or having someone else train it for you or getting a program dog, having a service dog is a major commitment. There's the time commitment in terms of you being responsible for the dog for its lifetime. There's also the commitment for its care, so making sure that you're able to feed it, let it out to potty, just kind of basic dog care needs. There's also the financial commitment that goes into having a service dog, whether that's the cost of the dog itself, the cost of any training, the cost of all of its equipment. All of these things are things you do need to be aware of and be prepared for. If you are training your own service dog, you especially need to be very sure that you are ready for the commitment. Because if any of you have seen my video from last week, you will know that just week one was so hard for me. So I have mental health impairments. So if you are like me in that sense, or in any way your disability can get in the way of training, do keep that in mind and make sure you have a good support system in place because that can make all the difference in your success. Even if you're not training your own service dog, it is a major commitment and something to be aware of. If you are like me and you have social anxiety or you're non-confrontational or you are very, what is this fly? or you are very uncomfortable with people looking at you or having extra attention, that's something you heavily need to consider too because that's an inevitability when you do have a service animal. If you think all of these signs are maybe discouraging you from getting a service dog, please don't let that discourage you. This is just a little bit of a guide so that you make an informed decision. And if you do think that this is all too much and maybe a service animal isn't right for you, consider an emotional support animal because they can be a good alternative. But please, please don't be that person that falsifies a pet dog as a service dog because it's not only illegal, but it is morally very, very wrong. If you guys want me to cover a video where I go over the difference between a service dog and emotional support animal and very comparing the differences between service dogs, emotional support animals, and therapy dogs, let me know down in the comments below. So that about covers my TED Talk for today. If you liked this video or if it was at all helpful for you, please give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe so you can follow our journey. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.